Now we would like to, to, to invite Mr. Dilip from Econ Labs to deliver his speech. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. It's good to see a lot of empty seats, so I'll make this quick. I've been told to make it quick. <clears throat> I'm used to walking around and talking, but being an academic institution, I have to follow rules. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm here to talk about something quite different from what many people have been talking here. Uh, <clears throat> a bit about the company is called Icon Labs, the startup. Um, I know I look a bit older than normal people who start up, you know, youngsters who do this. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I promise you other than me, everybody else is a young person in my team, boy, boy or girl. Uh, <clears throat> the product is called iEngage. I know the uh, leaflet says, the pamphlet, uh, pamphlet says that it is uh, Verve. We, we did have solutions by that name. Uh, <clears throat> you can check out iEngage.io. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, <clears throat> I just had a question. How many of you are students, research scholars, PhD students, or show of hand, please? Students? Okay, good. How many of you are doing startups? Wonderful. So yesterday there was a roadmap which was presented here talking about how entrepreneurship and innovation is important for helping the economy of the country. And it's true that uh, <clears throat> some of the best startups around the world have happened when the economy has been down. So if, if you know, in India it is booming, uh, startups are happening every day uh, where I come from. And if you're going through a, a difficult period in your economic situation, this is the best time to start up. Uh, <clears throat> let me just quickly get into, uh, I will not talk about my product here, it's, it's called uh, iEngage.io. It's... Uh, about engaging your customers. Could be any, any, anybody. Uh, your students could be customers for the university, so. Okay, <clears throat> there's a lot of debate, you know, yesterday we had some discussion about how, you know, there could be stuff in the open source code, and I have one submission. <clears throat> it's nothing to do with code. Basically, if you thought you can build a great product and a good company, uh, just because you own the code, that's a myth. Uh, I'm sure some of you who are experienced here will know that uh, large organizations have written crappy code, used a lot of marketing, and have become extremely successful. So code has got nothing to do with it. So if you're making a product, you better know how to sell it, and it's nothing to do with code, actually speaking. Uh, <clears throat> when we started, we had some choices to make. Do you read when the wheel, or do you decide to stand on the shoulders of a great set of communities. So how can you actually create a startup, an enterprise, and grow it and satisfy your customers utilizing open source as a set of comp components? And I'm not talking about using open source for non-differentiators. I'm talking about open source, which can actually give you some extremely good differentiation. <clears throat> the other good thing about open source is uh, about culture. Uh, I think uh, I'll talk about it in the next slide, but it's extremely important. You've got to decide if you're starting up. Uh, one gentleman put, put his hand up and said he's going to start up or he's already started up. If you're using open source, I can guarantee you, you're going to have a phenomenally great team if you get them to adopt the open source culture. And again, it's not just about code. Uh, <clears throat> not, 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 since not many of you are doing uh, startups, so I wouldn't dwell on this, but... Uh, Basically, open source components could be used in multiple things. It could be used in the language that you use to develop your, you know, uh, the product. They could be used in uh, very critical components that could actually 
support making a product. So when we did our product, what we did was to first of all understand what components we needed. And we decided that all the foundation blocks of the product would be open source components. And we would build on top of it. That is a decision uh, which we took. And the reason why we were able to bring out a product so fast and so quick with some very interesting customers because we've been able to leverage. So we never felt like we are a startup because we had thousands of people, maybe hundreds of thousands of people in open source communities innovating every day in making uh, those components better. Uh, I know you, some of you are computer science. I mean, at least I spoke to people yesterday who are PhDs in computer science. So a good architecture uh, and a good design uh, and can ensure that you can actually continue to use these open source components uh, as your product gets better and better, as it matures. Uh, also think about using uh, open source in your DevOps. And it's one of the phenomenally great areas in which open source is doing well. Uh, which is, you know, I mean, people are talking about get, get your product fast in front of your customers, get hit by your customers, get their feedback, and make changes, come back to the market again with the new version. If you want to do that, you better have DevOps. So I talked about, I'll skip this, basically, various languages, various databases, frameworks that you can use for the user interface and the, the back end in your object relational mapping. I mean, you can go on and on. You could use uh, open source for IDE on a DevOps side, compilers you want to use, you know, <coughs> repositories, managing your uh, repositories, testing and, and stuff like that. Uh, so when we went about, uh, how do you select? Because open choice actually uh, open source actually spoils you for choice. There's so many communities. If you want a building block, you'll find 10 communities doing it. So it's very important for you to be able to evaluate what you want to pick up. So uh, we used about 14 criteria looking at each of those open source communities handling those components and decided which ones we want to go with. We also joined the community to understand what is their culture, whether we love you know, utilizing their code. Because it's your choice. It's your company. It's your startup. And if you want to do a startup, uh, you better feel excited about it. And that's what we did. So <clears throat> uh, the other thing you need to look at, I mean, there are multiple things you can look at. How long has the community been there as an open source community? How long have uh, you know, they've been continuously releasing code? What's the longevity? How much of, you know, you can even look at the bug density that, that open source community is producing. You can really evaluate in detail. You know, any one of you interested? Uh, I'm not sure whether, uh, how many would be interested, but if you're interested, I'm available. You can, uh, we can have a long discussion on how this can be done. And the other thing is about licenses. Just because you have, uh, you're using open source doesn't mean everything is. So there are flavors and you know, gr granularity in what you would use as open source licenses. So you need, better be careful what license you're going to use for your open source project. Because if you use incompatible licenses, you're going to have a problem. Uh, I mean, and it's something for some legal folks to help you with. Based on your business model, uh, the license could be different. So it's it's a it's actually a uh, an issue that you need to think about. I mean, are you going to have a software uh, that you're going to have on a SaaS model, or are you going to distribute the product to uh, all over the world? So if you're a startup, you need to think about that, and and that that will also help you decide which open source components to pick up. Uh, so a little bit about the product. Um, it's and it's a funny product because there is no user interface. It's a it's a set of APIs services that help you to engage your customers. Okay, you can go to iengage.io. You can use your I mean for 30 days it's free. You can actually use your credit card, subscribe, and start using uh, the the APIs. You can try it out. Uh, we're happy to get some feedback from those of you who are going to use it. Uh, <clears throat> The product in, in quickly um, is uh, a channel which basically handles all kinds of interactions. Uh, the assumption is that everybody is talking about digital transformation, and on, on one side you have ERPs and CRMs and um, your PRMs and HRMs and stuff like that, and academic systems. All of them have been built for managing transactions. 
which is wonderful. They're great piece of software and it's not going away. But now you have customers with smartphones on the website, using Twitter handles, using your Facebook page. They're gonna, they are hitting you from everywhere and they're disappointed. So employees are disengaged. The research shows that at least 80% of employees are disengaged. Customers, after they become your customer, are not engaged. So the whole pro product is about how can you utilize certain things to engage your customers, whoever they are. Uh, we, use, um, we use AI, and AI for us is not artificial intelligence alone. We call it augmented intelligence. So we combine human intelligence with machine intelligence. And we're doing some nifty stuff. Many of our folks are not, un uh, fortunately, unfortunately, not engineers. Many of them are mathematics postgraduates or dropouts in mathematics or hackers who basically are, are excited about what we call, it's, it's a revolution of the algorithm. We think that is going to change the world, you like it or not. So <clears throat> we are in that, that, that game. We also have a process engine by which you can define how you want these interactions to be handled. Because you have those proprietary software which costs, in yesterday somebody was talking about millions of reals, and you obviously are not going to buy too many licenses. So how, you can use this as a distribution box to be able to connect to your source of interactions and pass it on to various entities who are interested in knowing what's happening with your customers or other stakeholders. And then of course, uh, like the economy, engagement always is up and down. So we have a rewards and recognition mechanism which you can use to actually start doing some amount of gamification. Uh, badges, privileges, uh, you know, even redemption of points. So some interesting stuff there, if those who are interested, I can explain this. I skip through this. This is what I talked about. On the left hand side, uh, you see uh, all the channels, which is uh, Yammer, Slack, you know, you, you know all of them. And any input could come in, and this could come in in audio, video, images, text, doesn't matter. And once it hits this, uh, this channel, we can actually tell you what kind of interaction it is. Yes. I'm done, last slide. Uh, and what kind of interaction that goes in there. And, uh, and on the other side, you have the traditional uh, systems that I talked about. And what we, what we do is like a black box which sits in between and streamlines this communication at the same time start giving you some very interesting insights. Is somebody pissed off, somebody angry, somebody is looking, you know, scowling while, you know, videos in, I, we can analyze videos, we can analyze audio, we can analyze text, use natural language understanding and stuff like that. So some very interesting nifty stuff we do. We use tons of, and by the way, this is not OS being used. So when I say we use open source components to build an enterprise grade product with a set of young people, it is definitely not you know, using one OS in a database. We use some really interesting set of things. These are all stuff that we use. So for example, activity is the BPM engine. Uh, <clears throat> that's, a, that's actually a fork from JBoss JBPM from Red Hat. Uh, <clears throat> Liferay, of course, some of you know. Of course, we use Py Python is for most of our, uh, you know, our work that we do in the artificial legion space. Um, <clears throat> database, of course, uh, handling stuff like, you know, services, uh, containers, and being, managing stuff. And of course, um, so we use Spark, Spark with uh, connecting to either a Hadoop or a, 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 a streaming uh, set of, uh, to handle streaming set of data. Uh, we started with Apache Mahut. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, one of the uh, really good ones which we like is a Stanford uh, NLP, which is, helps you to do all kinds of interesting stuff on natural language understanding. So this is kind of, uh, uh, and Swagger is, like I said, we are completely API-driven product, so uh, Swagger is a, uh, it's a mechanism by which, again, open source, by which you can actually help you to play around with the API. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll see that. So a ton of open, uh, open source components and each one of them playing a critical role in making this product what it is. And, and not, uh, uh, that's what I want to stress. It is not just using it for uh, an operating system or a database. <clears throat> Some of the benefits we had, and I'm, I'm done. Uh, none of the team members think that uh, most software engineers have a problem. They want to write all the code and they're very uh, proud people. 
right? Uh, getting, taking someone else's code and using it is a big problem for most software engineers. And I've been doing this the last 30 years. And I'm not even a software engineer, okay? So I can tell you they're very proud people. And open source actually brings humility. It makes a change and it shows you how fantastic it is to have lots of people supporting you when you're especially a startup. Uh, stability, people have used it, tested it, you know, again and again. So whatever you use is going to be really nice and good. And uh, <clears throat> they keep innovating. So you get the best of standards and the best of technology. And we can do whatever you want, right? Of course, it reduces cost and, and makes you extremely competitive. And as a startup, you have to be competitive because you can't survive otherwise. There are some issues. Uh, you need to know that they, every open source community goes at their own pace and speed, and you need to synchronize as a, as a, as a startup or an entrepreneur. And uh, <clears throat> I talked about the license issues. And then, please continue to contribute because that's the only way if you give you actually get more than what you give. So that's what my last message is. I'm done, so I'll be around. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, impact the partners that we work with here as a booth here. So if you would uh, want to talk, talk to me about this, you can drop in there. Thank you very much.